Hey, are you still alive? Brad, is it really you? Yeah, that's right. Is that the first thing you have to say after five years? Well, yeah. I thought you'd be surprised since I was gone for five years. Why did you text me all of a sudden? Actually, it's because I'm about to get rich. What? I don't get it. What are you talking about? I'm working on a big project right now. I'm about to be a millionaire. Okay. What's that got to do with me? I need your help. We're going to be successful together. Are you kidding me? I don't want that kind of future. That's cold. But really, I'm going to make it. Believe me. Believe you? How can I believe you when you show up like this out of the blue after five years? Don't say that. Just look at what I'm about to do. I don't want to see that. I'm not interested in your dreams. Wait a minute. If I succeed, there might be some advantages for you. Your success is none of my business. Oh, come on. You have dreams too, right? This is your chance to make it come true. I'll make my dream come true on my own. You've always been stubborn and you haven't changed. But I'm not giving up. You should give up. I don't care about you anymore. Don't say that. Listen to me for once. You're so persistent. You're wasting your time. You're cold. I came back like this because I couldn't forget you, you know? I don't understand. Anyway, when I succeed, everything will change. I don't have time for your dreams. It's not a dream. It's going to happen. Then call me when it's real. It's too late if I do that. I need your help right now. I need your knowledge and your connections. Knowledge and connections? Are you serious? With your help, we can pull this off a lot faster. I don't believe you. Don't think I've forgotten what happened five years ago. I've changed. I have a new business partner. My plan is perfect. I don't want to hear any more of that. Yo, I'm sorry I texted you out of the blue the other day. Please don't get mad at me, will you? I need your help with something. I thought I told you. I don't want to get involved. Actually, this may come as a bit of a surprise. I have a question I really need to ask you. I know it's been a while since we've talked, and it's kind of weird to talk about this, but just answer me honestly. Is it true that you're secretly hiding a $3 million inheritance? My source is solid, so don't lie to me. What are you saying? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'd like to know where you're getting this from. I really have no idea what you're talking about. Don't play dumb with me. I got this information from a very reliable source. I mean, we're talking about $3 million. You've been fooling me this whole time, pretending to be poor, haven't you? Explain everything to me. Are you being serious? I would never do that. So, you're saying this whole story is a lie? Of course. What is this $3 million about? Explain. Your best friend Jessica told me. Your aunt passed away and your inheritance came in. It's true that my aunt passed away and left me a fortune, but it's mine. It has nothing to do with you. Don't be ridiculous. I'm entitled to that money too. You inherited $3 million from her, right? Entitled? You're the one who suddenly disappeared, remember? What are you talking about? I was gone because of you. You're responsible for that too. Huh? 
How can I be responsible for your disappearance when you disappeared on your own? It doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that I'm in trouble. Then what do you want? Be specific. Money. I need about one million dollars. Huh? Why should I pay such a large sum of money? I told you, didn't I? I'm going to be rich. I'm entitled to it. That's what the law says. Do you really know the law? The inheritance I got has nothing to do with you. Don't lie to me. Jessica told me everything about it. Then she is wrong. I want you to stop talking about this nonsense. I can't do that. I need that money. Is this the big project you were talking about? If you need it, make the money yourself. Stop relying on me. You're the one who left me. Take responsibility for that. No, I don't understand. You're the one who dumped me, remember? There's no reason for me to take responsibility. Stop making excuses. Just give me the money. I refuse. Don't contact me anymore. Don't run away, Emma. Running away is what you do best, isn't it? Don't contact me again. I'm having a hard time now. You have no idea. Hard time? You disappeared for five years without saying a word, and now you're telling me what? Do you know how much I've suffered? Every day was hell for me. And now you're playing the victim again, but I don't believe you. You're cold. We were married, weren't we? We were. Past tense. It's over. I'm not going to end it so easily. I'm still in love with you. You love me? You left me alone for five years and that's love? You know what? I had no choice. Just listen to me. I'm not listening to you. You left me. That's all I know. You really are cold-blooded. But fine. I'll do anything to get my money. You'll pay me one million dollars plus alimony. Huh? You must be thinking of something absurd again. I have my ways. If you don't pay, I'll take it by force. Force? How? I'm going to take legal action, even through an attorney. You go ahead. I have nothing to do with it. If that's what you want, you better brace yourself. You're the one who should be prepared. I'm not being pushed around by you anymore. I'm just asserting my legitimate rights. Rights? You have no rights. I have nothing to do with you anymore. That's not true. We were married, so I'm entitled for the money. At least that's the way I see it. Then you can go on living in your imagination. That's not how reality works. Reality doesn't change how I feel. Your love is self-fulfilling. It doesn't matter to me anymore. Don't say that, Emma. I really do love you. Then why don't you go back five years and start over? It's too late now. Don't contact me anymore. Hey, I heard you've been snooping around me lately. Huh? What do you mean? My neighbors and co-workers say they've seen someone who looks like you. Oh. Did they find out? What the hell are you doing? Actually, I was doing a background check on you. A background check? Why would you do that? I just wanted to make sure you weren't hooking up with some strange woman. I mean, you've been out of touch for five years, and I don't know what kind of people you've been involved with during that time. You've always been a little insecure in your judgment. So I was worried that I needed to keep an eye on you. I wouldn't want you to be pushed around by some strange woman again. You don't trust me that much. I've done some weird stuff myself, but you don't have to worry so much. Besides, how could any woman be weirder than you? 
I tried to forget you, but I couldn't. There's no one in my life that's had more of an impact on me than you. Besides, I'm a grown man now. I don't fall for strange women anymore. Then that's fine, but I'd rather forget about you. You're actually waiting for me, aren't you? Why would I do that? Because the house and the office are still the same as before, right? You're always ready for me to go home, aren't you? That can't be true, can it? I can't change my job that easily. And the house is the one my father left me, so I just live there. There you go again, making excuses. The truth is, you've been wondering how I'm doing, haven't you? You went to the trouble of doing a background check. You don't look like it, but the truth is, you still care about me. You haven't changed. You still love me. My neighbors asked me, did your husband come back? And my co-workers at work asked me, are you guys back together? It's really annoying. I can't stand it when you get involved in my personal life. And I don't want them to think as if I'm waiting for you. And explaining every time is annoying as well. Do you have any idea how much of a mess you've made of my life? What the hell? Why don't you just not worry about that much? You're so proud to be told that your handsome husband is back, aren't you? That is really annoying. I don't want you to get involved in my life. You're still saying that? I was actually worried that my share would be reduced if you had fallen for some strange guy. But it seems like you're still alone, and I'm glad. What are you thinking? I bought something I wanted, so I made sure everything was delivered to your house cash on delivery. So please pay for it. I'll come get it next time. Huh? Is there a problem? Of course there is. Don't get hung up on such a small thing. Listen, I know you don't care anymore, but can I ask you something? What? Why did you leave five years ago? Are you still curious? A little. Actually. Just be honest. Something struck my soul. No, I don't understand. It means... I had that kind of encounter. You mean you were having an affair? That's not a good way to put it. It's not? Because it was pure love. Right. But I found someone else. It was a sad, pure love. And you went to her? She was a beautiful woman who was perfect for me. Oh, that's good. You understand? That's my girl. So that's why you left? I was so excited. Actually, it's all because I'm hot. I'm guilty of attracting women because of my charm. I can't fight fate, you know? Because no matter where I go, women keep coming to me. It's no wonder I'm in this situation. To be honest, I'm a bit confused myself. But I have to accept that it's fate. I see. Well, that can't be helped. I can certainly understand why women come to you no matter where you go. I was caught by your charm at first, too. But I don't think you should brag about your attractiveness like that. Fate sounds good, but in the end, you're just acting selfishly, aren't you? Acting without consideration for other people's feelings is not good, no matter if you're good-looking or not. Well, there are things I should reflect on. But I thought you would understand. So, are you still with that person? Unfortunately for you, yes. As a matter of fact, I am. So I can't be with you. I know. Don't cry. It's not pretty to see an old lady cry. Don't worry, I'm okay. Well then, to celebrate... I'll send the items you ordered to you when they arrive. Can you give me your address? Are you sure? Yes. What a lucky guy I am. Hey, what's this all about? 
What's wrong? I was waiting for the brand new suits and shoes I ordered, wondering when they'd arrive. I was so shocked by that. I had no idea you had ordered that kind of things. I was looking at all the stuff and I wanted it all. I just couldn't resist. It was really hard to say no to the delivery company every time a package arrived. What the hell are you doing turning down things that people ask for? Because I don't want or need it. That's terrible. I was looking forward to it. And what's this bill for? Oh, did you see it? Why am I getting a bill for alimony? Because you told me the other day. Five years ago, you said there was a woman who caused you to leave me. What does it matter now what happened five years ago? But I didn't know until the other day. So I can make a claim because the statute of limitations hasn't expired yet. What a sneaky woman. That's the thing. I'm glad I gave up on you. I don't care what you think. I'll make sure you pay me alimony. How can you treat such a handsome husband like that? Are you still talking about that? What are you going to do about my heavenly feelings? I thought I was going to be rich. I don't know about that. Then I'll pay you with a share of the property I get from you. Huh? Are you an idiot? What? There's no way there's a property division I'm giving you. Why not? I was your husband and I didn't get anything five years ago. So I'm entitled to it, right? I know you're expecting my aunt's inheritance, but that's from my aunt. Even if you were my husband right now, you have absolutely no right to receive it. Huh? Besides, the cause of our divorce was your affair. In other words, it turned out to be your fault that we got divorced. In this case, you are the one who pays alimony, right? So, I don't get a dime? Of course not. I can't believe you didn't know that. Then what the hell did I text you for? Well, to pay me alimony? <laughs> oh no. But thank God you gave me your address. You saved me the trouble of looking it up. Was that your plan from the beginning? That's what happens when you get blinded by greed. I love you, and you betrayed me. You're still with that beautiful woman, aren't you? Oh, that's what you mean. You're jealous, aren't you? You're so over the top. I know how you feel. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? Well, since you reached out to me, I thought I'd give you something. What do you mean? I'm sorry, you didn't get anything, so I thought I'd at least give you the bill. What? That's not funny. It's the most thoughtful thing I can do right now. I don't want that. I'm sorry, but unlike the package you asked for, you can't refuse to accept that. Oh no, I was supposed to be rich. It seems that Jessica talked to you about money on purpose, huh? Why? She said she got angry when she bumped into you and you looked so fine. And you had a girl with you. That's none of her business. After you suddenly disappeared, I panicked. And she saw how depressed I was. So? It's like she thought if she told you that I had a stash of money, you would definitely contact me, hoping for us to get back together. She said something like, if you were a married couple, you would get half of the inheritance when you split up. That's why she told you about the inheritance and purpose. What do you mean? Because with an inheritance, she thought you would think you were entitled to receive it. She said she thought you wouldn't know that much. Seriously? I just happened to tell her about the inheritance, but I didn't know this was going to happen. Well, I'm glad I did. Are you mad? Of course. Oh well, I'm glad. You didn't know anything. 
Well then, please take care of the alimony. Hey, wait a minute. Emma, you're kidding, right? Seriously, I'm paying? This is a joke, right? I'm not kidding. Thank you so much for contacting me. You made me feel much better. I feel like I'm finally at peace now. Wait a minute. I'm in trouble. I can't believe I'm being put in this ridiculous situation. I didn't want to pay alimony. This is absolutely wrong. This is not fair. Where's the reason I have to go through with this? No, this is not a joke. This is reality. So the time has finally come for you to pay for what you've done. I've been waiting for this moment for the past five years. This finally makes me feel better about it. Please be well from now on. I suggest you take a life lesson and reflect a little. Wait a minute. There's no way I can pay that much money. Are you sure you want to end like this? Can't you do something about it? There's nothing I can do about it. I have nothing more to say to you. Well, goodbye then. Good luck with your life from now on. I can't believe this is happening. What am I going to do now? Please, please reconsider, Emma. I can't. Five years have changed my mind, sorry. Emma, please, help me. After that, Brad had to pay for his stuff and alimony. His credit card bills piled up. He lives in a shabby apartment and could barely afford to pay his rent. He could barely afford to eat and spent his days eating nothing but instant noodles and cheap frozen foods. It was nothing like the luxurious life he once dreamed of. Of course, the beautiful woman was disappointed in him and left, since he now has no money at all. It was his own fault. On the other hand, I am leading a fulfilling life both at work and in private. In fact, there is a man I am interested in, and my relationship with him is going well. I want to move forward to a brighter future without being stuck in sad memories of the past. Hi, Amber. I hope you're doing great. Not sure if Mark has told you, but we're having a wedding in two weeks. It would be just a small wedding for both close family members, but we would love for you to come. Ugh, small wedding? Thought you guys would be broken up by now. I don't understand what he sees in you anyway. Didn't you come from a poor family? Dad is a farmer, something like that? Your wedding sounds like a waste of my time. I'm sorry you feel that way, but Mark will be very happy if the complete family is there. I really hope that you can make it. Look, I'm a big name here in Paris. I can't be seen in some mediocre wedding. It wouldn't be a screen, but it would be great for memories. Begging like the poor girl that you are. My assistant is sick this week. I need you to book and pay for my flight ticket. I like for it to be business class and window seat only. For the food, no seafood, no beef, no chicken, only salad. No gluten, no dairy, no fried or grilled anything, no nut. I need a fancy car to pick me up from my apartment to airport, so please get that one right too. Don't embarrass me and don't mess up this order. I will not forgive you. Sorry, Ember. I might be really busy. Is it possible that anyone else can help you with the booking? Or perhaps I can ask someone else. You're kidding, right? You're literally the perfect person for this low job. If you want Mark to be happy on his wedding, you better do as I say. Stop trying to ruin things for once. Ugh. This is why we don't welcome someone like you to our family. You idiot! What the hell are you even doing? Hi, Amber. What do you mean? Didn't I ask you to book the flight ticket? Do you want me to come or not? Damn it, Wendy. You're pissing me off. 
I did book the flight for you, Amber. I emailed it to you yesterday. Exactly. Just for me? What the hell were you thinking? I need you to also book the flight for my friends, my boyfriend, and his family. They're all coming, so don't embarrass me. Wait, you invited those people too? Amber, I thought I mentioned to you that it's just going to be a small wedding between close family members. Of course I invited them. They're gonna think I'm a loser for attending such a small wedding. I'm already so embarrassed that my brother is marrying a cheap woman. I'm literally doing you a favor just by attending. If you have a problem with me bringing more people, then I will not come. Easy. My poor brother Mark must be so sad and disappointing, knowing his oldest sister can't make it to the wedding because his idiotic and cheapskate wife won't be able to fit in slightly more people in her low-budget wedding. My goodness me. Ember, I'm not sure if we can cater to that many extra people. We've planned for months. It's going to be difficult. Then fucking make it work. Let's not waste my time. You're marrying my brother. Shouldn't you have respect for me? Is this how you treat your future sister-in-law? Gosh, even saying that roasts me out. I'll try to make some arrangements, Ember. You better. I can't believe I have to keep on texting you and telling you what to do. For God's sake, Wendy, can't you just do one thing right? I'm really starting to wonder if my educated and well-behaved brother Mark really chose to be with you. Did you blackmail him or something? There's no way he's willing to be with someone as low as you are. Gosh, I'm so frustrated. I could die at any minute because of you. Hey, Amber, what's going on now? I've already booked flight tickets for all your extra guests and made last-minute arrangements to fit them all in the wedding. Why didn't you book us a hotel? Do you have to be told to do everything? Can't you think? Wait, I didn't know that you would need to stay in a hotel. I thought you would be staying at the family house. I've helped out clean your room and prepare it for you when you come back. As for the rest, I thought they would have their own arrangements. I didn't know I was supposed to provide accommodations for extra guests too. I'm a bit confused. Hell no! What makes you think I'll stay at the family home? Do you not fucking know who I am? I don't want the media to be seeing me anywhere close to that old house. But Ember, the family would be so happy to see you in the house. Well, I am not so happy to see any of them. Listen, Wendy, could you not make me repeat myself? Get me a hotel room at the nearest five-star hotel as well as the rest of my guests. Get us the most expensive rooms you can get. Don't you dare pick the cheapest one and embarrass me. Wait, Ember, am I expected to pay for this? I've already paid for the flight tickets and those were way over my budget too. It's going to be hard for me to afford expensive hotel. Wow, what a cheap skate indeed. Wendy, just in case you haven't noticed, I don't care whatever kind of money problems you have. Are you telling me that you would rather that I sleep on the street or something? What a joke. Get it done and get it done quick. Stop making excuses. Hey honey, I heard Ember is not staying at the family house. Is that true? Hi honey, that's true. She's staying in a hotel instead. Perhaps she feels uncomfortable with everyone else around and she hasn't seen them for years. What a joke. And her extra guest? Yeah, they're staying in a hotel too. I've helped them make some arrangements. Wait, who's paying for this? Please tell me Amber is responsible for all the payments. About that... Honey, no way! You're paying? The flight tickets too? That's outrageous! Why didn't you tell me? I would have given her a piece of my mind. I know you don't have enough to pay for all those. Honey, it's okay. Don't be angry first. I'll work extra hours after a wedding. Don't worry. I've already talked to my manager about it. Wendy, don't be crazy. I'll talk to Amber. Mark, no! Please don't talk to her. Look, I just really want a nice and smooth wedding, okay? I really can't afford another tantrum and whatnot. It feels like a bit of bad luck. Let's just listen to her this time. I promise, no more. I really don't want everyone to get involved. 
Honey, you're being too nice. It's really okay, honey. Please just let this one go and pretend like you don't know anything about it. Fine, if you insist. But if she does it again, I will not stop. Don't worry, honey. I will help you pay for the things. That's the least I can do since you're being so sweet trying to bond with my sister even though she's being disrespectful. Hi, honey. Did you by any chance went into my room earlier or saw anyone who did? I think I saw Ember went in because she said she needed to borrow something from you. What's wrong? Well, remember the necklace that my father gave me for the wedding? One that my mother wore during her wedding. It's missing. I don't think I misplaced it. I put it in the box near my bed. It seems like someone took it. I'm just not sure who. Also, my wedding dress is slightly torn on the sleeve. Seems like someone might have tried it on and tore it apart by accident. Oh no, do you think it's Ember? It must have been her. That's it, I'll talk to her. No, no, please. I'll talk to her. I'm sure it's just a misunderstanding. Please let me handle this. Hi, Ember. Sorry to bother you. Did you by any chance take my necklace and try it on my dress? The hell? Are you accusing me of stealing your stuff? You're kidding, right? What? No, no, that's not what I mean. It's just that Mark told me that he saw you went into my room. My necklace has gone missing. It's the one my father gave to me for my wedding. Boo-ho, sucks to be you. I didn't steal your cheap-ass traditional necklace. What makes you even think that I would want to touch that, huh? You think a high-profile person like me would want to get anywhere close your cheap dress and necklace? Sorry, Ember. I really didn't mean to accuse her anything. Maybe I misplaced it. I'm sorry. What joke? It's almost like you're trying to make me hate you more by behaving this way. I know this is the behavior you grew up with, but can you like civilize just for a bit? My poor brother is probably so embarrassed. I haven't found my necklace yet. My father would be so disappointed when he sees me not wearing it. About that... Did you see it? No, I didn't, but Ember has been telling the rest of the family members that you were being so harsh on her and accusing her of stealing it. She said you also accused her of touching your wedding dress. She claims she's traumatized by your reaction and refused to get anywhere near you now. What? That's not true. I didn't do that. Why would she spread the wrong story about me? I know you didn't do it, honey, and if it wasn't for you, I would have given her a piece of my mind, but you told me you didn't want me to get involved. That's right, honey. It's okay. Tomorrow, I'll be your wife, and that's all I care about. Let's just ensure that everything goes smoothly. I'm really not up for some family drama. I can't wait to marry you. I'll see you tomorrow. Seriously, Ember, this is too much. I can no longer take this disrespect from you. I tried my best to listen to you and build a bond with you, but all you've been trying to do since day one is embarrass me and ruin my wedding. Throwing up all over my guests and starting a fight with my bridesmaid? Interrupting the ceremony is a joke? Aye, would you even do that? You told everyone that I was accusing you of stealing my necklace. I was right! You stole my necklace and you have no shame walking around with it, especially in front of my father. He was so hurt because he thought I didn't want it. And wearing white to my wedding? What exactly is your problem with me? What did I ever do to you that you want to ruin my wedding so bad? Hey Amber, is this you I see making out with your brother-in-law at the hotel lobby? What? How did you... When? Wendy, I need to have a conversation with you. Please, it's more than what you saw. There's an explanation to it. Please, you can't tell anyone about it. It will ruin my life. Wendy, I'm sorry for what I did. I was so horrible to you and you don't deserve it at all. I'm sorry I stole your necklace. You can have it back. I'm sorry I wore white. I was really an asshole for doing that. Hey, Amber. I'm glad you apologized. All I wanted was to bond with you like you're my own sister. We had a rough start, but I hope we get along from now. Don't worry, your secret is safe with me under one condition. 
What is it? I'll do anything, I promise. I need you to apologize to me in front of everyone during the wedding dinner. Apologize for accusing me of being mean to you. Apologize for stealing my necklace. Apologize for wearing white. Apologize for being awful to me. But I can't just apologize to you now. No, I wanted to be in front of everyone. You embarrassed me in front of everyone. It's only right that you apologize to me in front of everyone. Fine, I'll do it. Then your secret is safe with me. Thank you, Wendy. I've always known that you're such a sweetheart. Mark is so lucky to have you. What the fuck is wrong with you? You promised me you wouldn't expose me and you did in front of everyone. You're such a two-faced bitch. How dare you ruin my reputation? That's funny coming from you, someone who has been trying to ruin my wedding since day one. Think I'm a loser, huh? Are you out of your fucking mind? Nobody gives a shit about you. You're just a farmer girl who came to my family and tried to act like a goody-goody princess. I will let you get away with this. I will sue you for defamation. Oh, come on, Ember. Your boyfriend, or should I say ex-boyfriend, literally exposed your bankruptcy. How are you going to sue me? With what money? I heard you literally borrowed a combination of 100k from each of the family members. Maybe you want to worry about how to pay them back first? You crazy bitch! It was probably you who convinced him to do it. I knew that you've always wanted to ruin me. You're not going to get away with this. Please, Ember. You couldn't possibly think that your boyfriend still thinks highly of you after what you did to him. He doesn't need me to convince him, he already knows what he wanted to do. If I were you, I would start making an urgent plan to go and live somewhere else quietly. By the side of it, your family members are going to hunt you down until they get their money back. The revelation that Ember was actually bankrupt angered a lot of family members and it turned out that Ember had been borrowing money as much as $100,000 from the family members combined and the bankruptcy mean that she couldn't pay any of them anymore. Ember became an outcast in her family and was disowned and her story of bankruptcy was also shown in the media. She had to leave Paris and came back to her hometown and lived low in a small apartment. On the other hand, Wendy was able to finally live her life in peace without having to worry about the need to bond with her sister-in-law. She and her husband had a happy marriage.